I'm Catherine. I'm Paul. And we, we love trees. trees. Welcome back to the Going Zero Waste YouTube channel. I'm Catherine Kellogg, and today we're going to be touring a sustainably managed forest. I just had an awesome tour with Paul, and we're gonna break down exactly what a sustainably managed forest is. And this video is done in partnership with the Paper and Packaging Board. They've been one of my longest sponsors, and I'm so excited to finally get in and see just how eco-friendly this forest can be. Forests are often described as the lungs of the earth. They absorb carbon dioxide, produce oxygen, create strong soil, help create clean water, and provide habitats for countless species. In Maine, 89% of the land is forested, making trees a pretty important part of everyday life for a lot of people. So what does it mean to manage forests sustainably? To find out, I got to speak with an expert. Before we get to the current practices, let's take a step back in time because the answers to sustainably managed forests are rooted in the practices and wisdom of those who have stewarded these lands for thousands of years. Long before the arrival of European settlers, the indigenous peoples of Maine, particularly the Wabanaki Confederacy, maintained a deep and sustained relationship with the forest. These forests were integral to every aspect of Wabanaki life, from their spiritual practices to the economy. The Wabanaki managed forests sustainably using controlled burns, selective harvesting, and maintaining the health and biodiversity of the land. This relationship ensured that the forests remained vibrant and productive, supporting the Wabanaki people and the diverse ecosystems they nurtured. The arrival of European settlers in the 1600s marked a significant shift in the relationship with Maine's forest. The vast, dense woodlands that had been carefully managed became highly sought after, particularly the tall eastern white pines which were used for ship mast. By the 19th century, Maine had become one of the leading producers of lumber in the United States. So much of Maine's forested land was cleared in the 19th century to make way for agriculture. This widespread clearing dramatically altered the landscape, reducing so much of Maine's old growth forest and disrupting the ecosystems. In the late 19th century, a lot of large scale farming moved to the Midwest. So many farms in the region were abandoned and the cleared land began to return to forest. During the 1800s, 40 to 50% of the land was forested and now it's up to 89%. And reclaimed farmland has contributed to the massive resurgence of Maine forest, allowing for a mix of young and mature woodland that support a wide range of species. Sustainable management in a forest means that it's being managed for multiple objectives sustainably. Both timber, wildlife, recreation, forest health, all of that is being managed at sustainable levels to maintain all of those compatible uses. So that means, one, you're not cutting more than you should, you're, you're not cutting more than you're growing for timber, and that also means that you're improving the health of the forest while you're doing all that. Efforts by both private landowners and conservation organizations have played a key role in this transformation, with many acres of former farmland now under careful forest management. The restoration of Maine's forest on these reclaimed lands is not just an ecological success, but also a vital part of the state's strategy for sustainable forestry. By bringing these areas back into the forested fold, Maine is not only reversing the environmental impact of past agricultural practices, but also ensuring that its forests can contribute to the support of the state's economy and environment for generations to come. New England cottontail is, is a, a species that We've been trying to grow their population back in Maine, especially in the southern part of the state. So they love early successional forest, young, thick, short growth. They live in it. When we talked about uh, sustainability and diversity, part of that is not only for the timber, the health in the, of the forest, but wildlife habitat as well. Mm -hmm. Some of landowners' objectives are strictly wildlife, mm -hmm. right? And so we're managing that forest 
for multiple age class, multiple species, not only to benefit the health of the forest, but wildlife right. as well. Today, Maine's forestry industry is a blend of traditional practices and modern sustainability efforts, with nearly 90% of the state's land area covered by forest. This rich natural heritage continues to play a crucial role in Maine's culture, economy, identity, while ongoing efforts in restoration and sustainable forestry aim to preserve it for the future. Uh, Poland Water Districts, you know, 2,500 acres around Sebago Lake is to manage mm -hmm. the clean water, right. drinking water for yeah. Portland. Think about buffers, right, around water that mm -hmm. are forested, okay? And think about the heavy rainstorms we get now, mm -hmm. the intensity yeah. of the rain. Yeah. So the first thing they do is intercept it at the canopy, okay. right? Diffuse it, right? So you're not getting direct rainfall directly to the floor in the forest yeah um so they diffuse it they make the drop smaller all of that it's called canopy interception it's important to distinguish between sustainable forestry practices which involves careful planning and minimizing of ecological disruptions to maintaining long-term forest health versus deforestation linked to development which is driven by short-term economic gain where large swaths of forest are removed to make way for roads buildings and other infrastructure with little regard to the long-term ecological consequences. This type of deforestation is not sustainable and can lead to severe environmental degradation, including soil erosion, loss of wildlife habitats, and reduced water quality. In contrast, sustainable forestry actively fights against these harmful practices by ensuring that any tree removal is carefully planned and executed to minimize ecological disruption. We talk about diversity. We talk about diversity in age and species in the forest, you never want to say, I want to grow just pine, right? I just want to grow this. I don't, that's not natural. Right. And so you want to grow all the species that would naturally occur there. We grow natural trees. We don't plant. Wow. So what we're doing here with scarifying soil, timing to a good seed year, creating small openings for sunlight, that's all part of our management yeah. for the next age class. Yeah. Bees. The babies. So that, I don't, I I point, the only trees I ever planted, I'll be honest, were related to development mm. and over clearing for development. Yep. <laughs> That's it. The forest helps keep all of the soil intact, stable. Okay. See, so we don't have bare soils like on the edges of roads or anything like that. All the duff layer, you know, the young growth helps stabilize the actual soils, the surface of the soils. So it, when the water does run, it doesn't carry sediment, right. right? It's all filtered out in the duff layer and, and on. The other thing is, is it does is the forest actually uses water. Yes. So you have abundance of water, you know, rain fall in that area. It actually is absorbing through the roots and using it to grow. So it's reducing the water there as well that could potentially run through the soil and cause any type of erosion. Um, so, but I can tell you the biggest benefit in, in my opinion is the stability of the soils. When you buy wood or paper products, you might notice these labels that say FSC or SFI. These certifications indicate the product comes from a sustainably managed forest. But what do these certificates mean and why are they so important? The Forest Stewardship Council FSC is one of the most recognized certifications globally. It ensures that forests are managed in a way that protects biodiversity, water resources, and the rights of indigenous people. The Sustainable Forestry Initiative, SFI, is another important certification, particularly in North America. It focuses on promoting sustainable forest management through rigorous standards and continuous improvement. Getting certified is a rigorous process. It requires and adherence to strict guidelines that ensure every aspect of operations from harvesting to replanting is done sustainably. Smaller stems on the lower side when we're doing an early thinning, when they're younger, um, pulp typically for paper. For paper. Yep, paper packaging, all that stuff. As logs get to that size, you know, as they get bigger and we start thinning like them. Like this little skinny one right there? Yeah, that's probably firewood, right? Okay, yeah. Yep, that would probably go in the firewood market. Okay. And as we get bigger to this size, yeah. That's saw timber, okay. boards. Right. Um, and then what we would do, if that one was to be removed, we would cut that and we would take out as many logs as we could up to a 10 inch top. Mm -hmm. Log, log, 16 foot. And then the top mm -hmm. would go to pulp. Go to pulp, okay. And that would be the paper or packaging. 
For certified forestry operations, it's not just about meeting standards, it's about doing what's right for the forest and the community. Certification isn't just about the forest, it's about people too. And many of these programs emphasize the importance of community involvement and education, ensuring that everyone has a stake in the future of our forest. Maine's forests are a vital part of the state's identity and economy, but as the climate changes and pressures on natural resources increase, how we manage these forests will become even more critical. Climate change is already affecting Maine's forest with shifting temperatures, changing precipitation patterns, new pest pressures, and invasive species. Sustainable forestry practices are essential to adapting these changes while preserving the forest ecological and economic value. We're seeing more interest in sustainably managed forests from younger generations, as the forest we toured is being passed down through the family with the understanding of balancing economic needs with environmental stewardship. It's encouraging to see this growing awareness and commitment to sustainability. The future of sustainably managed forest in Maine will likely include new approaches like carbon credits, where landowners are compensated for maintaining forests that sequester carbon. My stepdad personally has one of these forests in Arkansas. He's a rice farmer. And these innovations combined with traditional practices will help ensure that Maine's forests thrive for generations to come. So having a healthy forest, healthy, sustainable forest involves uh, multiple age classes, multiple species, and structure within the canopy. We all play a role in maintaining healthy forest. Your choice to use paper and choose products that come in paper packaging can help keep our forests thriving because they provide income to owners so they can keep them healthy. I hope you found this video super informative. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and I can't wait to see you again in the next video.